recently warned of the possibility of Kenyans losing up to half a million jobs should the COVID-19 pandemic persist through the next six months. The president's announcement came only days before the World Health Organization cautioned world governments to devise methods to manage the COVID-19 pandemic, warning the virus could stay longer than expected. But what policies should the government devise to save jobs? And what strategies should policymakers implement to keep local industries afloat post-COVID-19? Where cometh a crisis beckons an opportunity, or so they say. An old adage, perhaps best depicted by this buzz of sewing machines at the remote Siongila town where Kitui County Textile Center continues its mass production of face masks, bridging the global demand for masks that spiked locally after COVID-19 pandemic outbreak. A story of Kenyan resilience shared by such other local farms as the Butali Sugar Company, which continues mass production of ethanol for manufacture of alcohol-based hand sanitizers. Yet beneath this shred of hope is massive despair among millions of Kenyans, surviving through pay cuts and massive job losses with the Ministry of Labor, estimating that COVID-19 pandemic had rendered some 133,000 Kenyans jobless by the end of last month, with President Uhuru Kenyatta recently warning that this figure could rise to half a million should the pandemic persist by another six months. Allow 13 billion refund of VAT to those employers in the horticulture of floriculture sector of our agriculture, main agricultural sector of economy, which means that uh, now the four more than f between four and six thousand workers who are to lose employment in Naivasha. They are now not going to lose their employment. But just what is the future of the Kenyan job market and what policies should the government institute to retain the vibrancy of local industries and safeguard jobs both in the formal and informal sectors? One of the things that we must adapt is the spirit of buy Kenya, build Kenya. This is the only way that you can deal and, and it is a vast area that needs to be well thought out. Focus on this 83%. People who don't have a leg or a salary. People who live from heart to mouth. Because that is the majority of the population. And any policy we come up with that does not focus on this group will not be very successful. But the COVID-19 pandemic has come with the critical global lesson on the immeasurable value of local workforce and prioritization of home sourcing of both basic and secondary commodities. The zeal of local industries producing such urgent commodities as face masks, hand sanitizers, personal protective gear and even ventilators, illustrating the largely underestimated value of the Juakali sector. A lesson National Treasury Cabinet Secretary Ukuria Tani says the government has learned as it prioritizes the Juakali sector in production of such urgent items as hospital beds for the expanded health facilities during the pandemic. With the future strategy being to leverage on technical vocational training centers and constituency industrial development centers, partly to boost local production through Juakali as an incentive to local job creation. The perspective that needs to be looked at is that we are not only the 47 million plus, but a region that has got a country in the name of Kenya that has been able to advance in manufacturing and the other fields of production, including assembly. And therefore, give it the best. I know Kenyans, I'm a Kenyan. Kenyans are hardworking people. I, I don't think whether we will uh, be badly hit uh, in restoring our economy. Bearing in mind that Kenya and Nairobi in particular is a, is a satellite of economic activities. The World Health Organization has already warned on the possibility of COVID-19 turning out to be another endemic like HIV AIDS. And as the 2020-2021 budget making process enters the home stretch, the Kenyatta administration will certainly be on the spotlight as jobs of millions of Kenyans hang in the balance. Brumi Mwangi, KTN News. COVID-19 